Hello, I'm Butch Curry from Zombie Nirvana Games. Welcome to the second installment of Fantasy Cartography with Adobe Photoshop, the podcast where I give you my favorite tips, tricks, and techniques for creating cool maps for your role-playing games. This week, we'll wrap up the textured paper background we started in the first episode. If you missed that one, now would be a good time to go back and give it a listen. I'll also talk a little bit about my Photoshop philosophy when I create a more crinkled version of our original paper. So let's get started. We're going to age the paper that we made last week uh, by darkening the edges. There are a lot of different ways we could do that. We could use the paintbrush and just brush some color on. We could use the burn tool. Neither of these are really optimal for me. The way that I prefer to do it is just like this. We're going to start by coming over here to the layers palette. We're going to come down to create new fill or adjustment layer. That's the half black, half white circle at the bottom. Click on that, then come up to Levels to add a Levels layer. We're going to use this to darken our paper by grabbing this black triangle here on the left, dragging it over towards the right, and you'll see the paper get darker as we do that. This is probably a little darker than we want to use, but we can fix it later if we decide we don't like it. I'm going to click on OK. Now this looks pretty good. I could probably use it just like this, but I'm going to change it just a bit more by changing the blend mode for this layer. I'm going to come back over here to the layers palette to the blend mode drop down menu. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to change it to color burn. You can see that changes the look to be more like what we get if we would use the burn tool. I don't want to use this effect over the entire paper, just over the edges. The way I'm going to do that is to come back over here to the Layers palette. I'm going to make sure that my layer mask for this Levels layer is selected. Then I'm going to hit Control i That's going to change this mask from all white to all black, which hides that uh, Levels adjustment. Then I'm going to grab the paintbrush that I want. For this, I like to use a large watercolor brush. I'm just going to come down here and... I'll try this one. Uh, it's not quite the size that I want. I want it to be a little bigger, so I'm going to just hit the right bracket key to increase the size. The opacity is already set there at 20%, which is pretty good. I don't really need the airbrush turned on. I'm going to switch the foreground color to white. Just hit X to do that, change it from black to white. I'm just going to start slowly painting this effect in. You can see it's starting to darken there around the edges. I'm going to shrink the brush back down a bit. Just hit the left bracket button. Then come back and hit it again. Don't need to be too precise. Just painting it in. Just like that. I could spend a lot more time with it, but you get the idea. If I decide the effect is still too strong, there are a lot of things I can do. I can come back and double click on the levels adjustment here and change that. I can change the opacity just to bring it down. You can see that lightens it up as well. Right about there, it looks pretty good. So why did I create all these crazy layers and layer masks? Why didn't I just use the eraser to make this deckled edge around the edge of the paper? That really gets into my Photoshop philosophy. Two of the things that I really look for when I'm creating a new technique, aside from the obvious, something that looks good, are fixability and flexibility. By fixability, I mean picking a technique that's easy to modify, one that I can add to, subtract from, or delete entirely later on without having to undo a lot of steps. By flexibility, I mean picking a technique that gives me the greatest number of options so that I can go in and modify it and change it and maybe do some different things with it, some things it wasn't intended to do. Just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, I'm going to make an entirely new paper texture. First I'm going to turn off my levels adjustment, my hue saturation layer. So there we can see our original paper texture. I'm going to make one that's a little more crinkled by coming back over here to the paper texture layer. I'm going to hit Control A to select everything, backspace to delete it. Now it's all gone. Just hit Control D to deselect. 
If you'll remember in the last installment, when we made our original paper texture, we started off by going to Filter, Render, and Clouds. And then we used the Emboss filter to give it uh, some dimensionality. We can make our paper even more crinkled by adding more contrast into it. One way that we can do this is built right into Photoshop, uh, into the filters, by coming down to Filter, Render again, and this time using Difference Clouds. You can see that makes a very high contrast, uh, but still random effect. And you can run the same filter over and over again. The more times you run Difference Clouds, the more crinkled your paper is going to be. I can run it again just by hitting Control F a couple of times. And that's looking pretty good. So now we'll go ahead and use the filter, stylize, and emboss. And you can see right away, you can see how much more crinkled and crumpled that paper is. Hit OK. Leave it just like that. Now you can see that because I used a layer mask instead of the eraser, I still have my same deckled edge. Because I used a hue saturation layer instead of changing the hue saturation of this paper layer, I can change the color right back the way I had it with a single click. Because I used the levels adjustment layer instead of using the burn tool, I can add my aged darkened edge just with one click, bring it back in. And I can change any of these. I can go back into my hue saturation and adjust the color. I can go back into my levels adjustment layer and change how dark or light the edge is, just like that. And that's what I mean when I say flexibility and fixability. The ability to go back in and make changes to specific parts of an image without uh, having to redo a lot of steps over and over and over again. So that's it for this week. Next week, we'll have a hard time seeing the forest for the trees when we begin our segment on creating and using custom patterns. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can contact me at zombienirvana.com. Thanks for listening, and happy mapping. Will you go, lassie, will you go?